Full disclaimer, although bone by nature is exceptionally strong compared to most things, no, the bone do not become stronger than steel when it breaks. Though pound for pound it can withstand one another, but if the opposition to the bone has a higher density and mass in comparison, the bone will hit its limit. It's just physics. With high intensity exercise alone, bone will increase its strength through regeneration and an increase in calcium absorption due to the high energy activity demand that it needs to support bone and muscle function, such as high intensity aerobics, lifting weights, combat sports, etc. So what you see in bone training, they strengthen most of the times are pain tolerance, tissue, which are the skin, and muscle resistance through impact. When a healthy, strong, active bone breaks, it simply heals to its optimal condition prior. As such, there are no scientific evidence a bone will further become stronger over time to continuous breaking. So please do your own research and train with caution. Also, plenty of professional advice. I do not appreciate my viewers to be running around and telling young trainees to punch and kick gas tanks or truck rims. Be careful. Now with that out of the way, today I am going to teach you Adamantine Kata from King and Ashura, the Nico style. Now beforehand, don't forget to warm up and get your body car temperature up and prepare the body parts that you are going to train today, such as legs, uh, shoulders, uh, forearms, your pushing strength and cardiovascular. Uh, you can jog, that's the easiest way to start, or like I'm doing right here, you can kickstart the full body resistant that we are going to train with burpee varieties, such as this one. Now remember, mobility and relaxation is also key to master and hone new skills. You have to ease into it and be open to new knowledge that you will encounter to better absorb it. Now, you need to properly train before you try something new because your body has to be prepared and your body has to um, adapt to the stress. It is for the fact, training is stress. So um, do dynamic stretches, do mobility work, make sure your blood is flowing, make sure your body is relaxed, you're fully aware and you're warm enough to be able to do um, many different kinds of variety of training. And so you won't pull a muscle, you won't um, hurt yourself, and you'll reduce the risk of injury. So again, be patient, warm up properly. Um, the technique is not going anywhere, but your body has to be able to handle the force, the stress, and all the kind of varieties that you will face. Prepare yourself properly, okay? So today, I'm going to teach you how to use adamantine kata. In philosophy to your strikes. My background of Wing Chun and Taekwondo has given me a proper grasp to full body movement, so my adamant and kata would be mixing traditional strengthening technique of Wing Chun and conventional MMA boxing applications. Why? Simple, it is efficient. Further down, I will explain why I use Wing Chun to condition and strengthen my strike movement pattern. Now, I learned this from my high school years, training with Wing Chun friends in Wing Chun Academy, and also um, boxing training in general. So, let's break this down, shall we? Now, with shoulders apart on the legs, and then knock your knees on each other to protect your crotch. This is the basic stance for Wing Chun. Now, Wing Chun technique emphasis on how you throw your punches straight to the max of your push motion. That's how hard it is. Now, when we train it at the end, every strike, we have the hand rolling motion to prep the wrist for further motion and impact. It's one of a kind conditioning. Now make sure to not rotate your shoulders here, okay? Lock the extension on chest length. Squeeze your core, proper alignment, no hunch, no arch, okay? And fully extend the elbow with a neutral wrist at the end. Now at the end of every strike, Add the twist as you desire to condition those wrists. Do this up to 100 repetitions or so until you're comfortable with it. So there's still a limit on how far you punch, but it helps your arms and joints withstand that throw. Even I still feel pain throwing wing chun punches. 
Now the next step would be to put the fight stance in the arms. This one would be more fierce and a lot more combat form. So palm to elbows and open the forward palm inwards and go back to the stance after one punch. Do this as many reps as possible until you're comfortable with it, which means no pain and discomfort. The next one would be the rapid striking motion. Now we are getting closer to the boxing aspect. Still use the stand and the wrist motion. Now you can add the strikes to three or four in one repetition. It's really up to you, but practice makes perfect. So I would say do as many reps as possible. After every rapid strike, go back to the stands. And don't forget to fully extend the elbow, okay? Front view, forethought. Now between these strikes, there are resistant conditioning that you must do, which is what we during our Wing Chun sessions do. And usually that is 10 push-ups for every 20 strikes. So it will be a um, superset. You can add more if you want, or simply focus on the eccentric of the push-up to gain more strength and power. So like two seconds down, three seconds down, five seconds down, and then rep out in that. Now I have a very special exercise that I learned to improve your push power. I learned this from my trainer, Mr. Jeffrey Abbas, awesome guy. This one is called the clap hold push up. Yep, it's as exactly as you see it is. So, instead of dropping down, you hold it in a full plank. Crazy, I know. Now, because it's high impact, I would say save this for the beginning of the training and don't do above 100. And if you want to do more, then just focus on, again, the eccentric and control of form to build the power. Be patient, it hurts, it's concrete, suck it up. This really strengthens your wrist. Now fingers in, form a knuckle. Let's box. I'm going to focus more on flashing steel and iron breaker. That is fast jabs and hard strikes. Now I really like these two and I want to master it as far as I can because it's simple and again, in comparison to Wing Chun, this has all the power and more reach as you align your shoulders to your face linear to the target. So it's efficient. Though it has less defense, you can counter that by retracting your punches after every strike, okay? That is very important. Protect your chin, protect your face, guard up. Now, leg torque. Hind legs are the biggest source of power, which has to be focused on. Okay, check your reach, which will be your full capacity of strikes, and then now you can start boxing. Focus on the leg, leg torque, hind leg torque, okay? Now, the flashing steel itself 
has a better reach. And that occurs when you focus your strikes in harmony to the propelling leg. Now remember, to focus on leg push, okay, it is very important to generate most of energy from there. Now remember, to focus on leg push, hip twist, and shoulder alignment, and elbow full extension. Okay, again, I repeat, focus on a leg push, hip twist, shoulder alignment, and elbow full extension. Now, as you compose your guard and footwork, do not aim too high. Aim your chin and your face. That is your target. Your chin and your face. Not too high, not too low, just straight on your eye line. Uh, focus on being correct with the technique first. Be simple with the footwork and just use strike forward. Okay, just strike forward. Use the flashing fire for the fast forward and back steps. And keep your hands composed, guard up, and your footwork intact. Hence, mastery. Now for bonus trick, bonus skill. I will show you how to mix the flashing steel with raging fire. So it will be adamantine kata with flame kata. Call this raging steel breaker. This is more fight choreo, okay? And usually boxers call this the overhand. Now, to add a little extra flavor, you have to act like you are throwing your punch in a heavy manner, like there is a weight that you slam hard. So it's a hook, but the axis goes up and down instead of out and in. Okay? So the axis goes up and down instead of the usual out and in. It's rustic, it's brawly, it's reckless, it's cool. It's adamant and kata, flashing steel, and iron breaker all together. Now, have a sort of a step in forward, you know? So step in forward as you throw your punches so you'll gain a lot more momentum and reach. That is flame kata and raging fire. Now, if you want to go to a punching bag, protect your knuckles and punch with the index and middle knuckle most of the time, wrap up use your gloves get boxing classes and create your own motion now thank you so much for watching support this channel by supporting me on patreon i would appreciate all your support it takes a lot of energy to make these videos and it would be amazing to be able to make this sustainable thanks for watching